fear. This has got the eternal truth. And Jesus said this about the truth. He said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Ain't nobody in here free unless you're saved. That's right. If you're not saved, you're not free. How could you be free if you died and the next second you end up in a devil's hell? And you call that freedom? And nobody in here has a promise of where you're going to be tomorrow, even if you're going to be alive tomorrow. You're living on the edge. Amen. We're all on the edge. One step away from the life after life, not life after death. The only death you're going to see, the body's going to see death, but you'll never see death. You'll be conscious from one life to the next. And by the way, Point two here was more people will be lost and will be saved. And there will be no exceptions to that. Point number three. Many expecting to be saved will be lost. There's a lot of folks, you know, and, and, and we can bear this out by the Bible. Look at Matthew chapter number seven now. Matthew chapter seven and verse number 15. <clears throat> it says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall what? Know, know them. Do you know, many are going to be deceived in these days by false prophets. Many people have already been deceived by false prophets. Amen. There are many cults today out in the, in the world that claim they got the truth, but the truth is they're leading people. Some of these cults are leading people to hell and they don't even believe there is a hell. It's amazing because they're deceived themselves and they don't realize the truth. And these cults, how, how, about, how about, you remember James, or Jones, uh, what was his name, Jim Jones? Remember Jonestown? Some of you old enough to remember that. That was just back in the 70s. Remember when Jim Jones had them all go down there to drink that poison Kool-Aid and take them into the never-never land? Busted the gates of hell wide open, the whole mess of them. And there, there, there's self-proclaimed Messiah sitting up there saying, it's time to depart. David Koresh, the latest example out here in Waco, Claimed he was Jesus Christ. We, hey, you got these birds all over the place, man. They're everywhere. And they're not just in Christianity. That, I guess that's Satan's ultimate coup de gras is counterfeiting Christianity. If the devil says, I know that's the truth, but if I could just counterfeit it and make it where I can get them to believe a lie, I can get them all into hell. And that's what he's doing today. Amen. I mean, people are going to hell by the millions. Amen. And I'm not telling you, hey, and, and most people that die and go to hell don't believe they're headed there. Their minds have been deceived and they're in religions. How many religions are in the world today? You couldn't even count them all. Amen? Amen. I think about that woman over in India who was worshiping the Ganges River. That river is their god, you know it? Missionaries saw this woman going down with two little children. One little old pretty girl and another crippled one that was handicapped and went down to the river and they were talking and that woman came back up from the river and only had one girl with her. Had the handicapped girl with her. He says, what's going on here? The missionary asked and he said, a woman went down to sacrifice one of her children to her God. She said, but why, why has she got the handicapped child? She says, she believes in giving her God the best she's got. Now let me tell you something. That, you know, you sit there and you may look a little strange at that, but they do that over there. They do that in lands like that. To a false god, they're deceived. But we do the same thing here, in essence. We sacrifice our babies on the abortion tables. Amen. Kill them by the millions, amen. amen. Under, under the banner of pro-choice, which is no choice for the child, amen. Let me tell you something. God creates that life and you take it away, it's murder. Amen. You'll give an account. If you don't get saved, you'll burn in hell on a high degree. And the doctor's with you. Amen. Amen. Let's just call it what it is. A lot of people are expecting to be saved, but they're going to be lost. You know, many people are counting on church membership. 
You can talk to them. You, you, I'm serious. I've talked to people and I asked them, I said, if you died today, are you sure you go to heaven? They said, well, I'm a church member. What's that supposed to mean? In other words, they think since they joined the church that they're going to heaven because their church is on the church roll down at the corner. You've got to do more and get your name on a piece of paper down in a building in order to qualify you for heaven. You've got to repent and trust Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And some people come up to you and tell you, say, well, preacher, I've been baptized. I told myself, I don't care if they have drowned you down here in the Flint River. That is not going to get you into the kingdom of God. Amen. Water doesn't save nobody. Amen. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ to save you. Amen. Amen. And uh, how about this one? Well, I'm doing, oh, they, they come across with this one. I say, sir, are you going to heaven? He said, I'm trying. <laughs> I've had a lot of people tell me that. Or this is a, this is a popular one here. I'm working on it. <laughs> and he's serious now. I said, are you going to heaven? He said, I'm working on it. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, well, I try to do the best I can. He said, I'm reading my Bible every day. I'm praying. And the sad thing about this, this man's going to bust hell wide open because he's counting on his works Amen. along with the belief in his head. And you don't go to heaven like that. That's right. You see how the devil got us? And by the way, I've been there. So, I mean, I can't sit there and make light of somebody else because he had me deceived. Amen. I mean, he had a whole heap of people in here deceived too. Amen. That's his job. I hate to give the devil any credit, but he is a good liar. He is a good deceiver. He is a good counterfeiter. And he's a good paymaster. He'll pay you off one day and it'll be hell. Amen. Then, number four, nobody will be saved after your physical death. Let me repeat that and again. Nobody will be saved after you die physically and go into the next life. For somehow, somebody got an idea somewhere. I don't know where they got this stuff. They must have been reading too many comic books. That somebody's going to come down, you know, and tap you on the back and say, come on, we've got good news for you. We're going to let you out and you're going to have another opportunity. Like I said, if you've been reading any books that said something about you, you need to get rid of them books. Amen. You won't find that in the Word of God. Amen. Let me tell you something. If you hadn't settled your salvation before you draw your last breath in this body, you're going to end up in hell in a millisecond. Just that fast. Amen. Amen. It says, uh, Hebrews 9, 27. As it is appointed on the man once to die, and after this the judgment. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Amen. Amen. Now you and I might cancel some appointments. But this one you ain't going to cancel. Death won't take no holiday. Amen. Amen. Now if you look at Mark chapter number 8. Mark chapter 8. Verse number 36. and 37 it says, For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What are you willing to trade for hell? Another bottle? What are you willing to trade? Another hit of crack cocaine? What's it going to take, man? What's, what are you willing to trade off to the devil for hell? See, the devil, he's a barger. He likes to deal with you. But I'm going to tell you something. If you deal with the devil, you're going to lose. The devil don't take no prisoners. He don't love nobody. He's a legend in his own mind, and he loves nobody but his greedy self. He's the father of lies, and he is death and destruction wrapped into one. Amen. And then, you know, and you'll see this, it keeps coming over in the Bible in the gene genealogies, and he died, and he died, and he died, and he died. One day, you and I are going to die. If the Lord don't come in this, in, in this generation right here, everybody in this room is going to die physically one day. But my question to you is, where are you going when you die? Amen. And Jesus warns us hell. Look at Mark chapter number 9. Mark chapter number 9. Verse number 43. He said, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not, 
and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Amen. Let me tell you what, we got such a sophisticated society today, they've done away with hell. They've done away with hell in most of our churches. There ain't nobody preach about it. Amen. It's, it's, it's not a tasteful subject to, uh, to talk about anymore. You know, isn't that amazing? They want to skirt around that. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Hell was so important that Jesus preached more about hell than he did heaven. He tried to warn us. And, and by the way, go over to Luke chapter 16. You say, well, Brother Larry, ain't, ain't nobody here ever been to hell, has there? No, not yet. But Luke 16, I, I, this is about as close as I'm going to get. I'd like for you to read this account of, of somebody that's in hell right now, amen, and somebody that's in heaven, the rich man and Lazarus. And this is not a parable because Jesus never used proper names in a parable. And if it was a parable, which it's not, it would still be the truth. Amen. amen. It says here in verse 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. Now I want to ask you a question. Look like hell has fire? Amen, Amen it has fire. Look like there's any water in hell? Not a drop. Not a drop. The reality of hell. And we've got to get to, the, to our senses because listen, this earth is a real place. It's a literal place. We're here right now. Heaven is a real, literal place. That's why Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Listen, I'm going to a prepared place. But also, if you die and go to hell, you'll be going to a prepared place. Prepared for the devil and his angels. And I'm going to tell you what, worse than any horror story you've ever heard or ever even fathomed in your mind, can you imagine burning up in a building and never have the fire to go out on your body and be screaming in agony and the worm dying not and you're screaming over and over again and you hear it's a madhouse in hell. And then we got people who say, well, I'm not really worried about it. Not worried about it. You ought, to, you ought to repent and get on your face and ask God for mercy before you die and end up in that place. Amen. Amen. And by the way, let me say this about hell. You don't have to worry about getting bad enough to go to hell. You know what the question was? They said, preacher, what do you got to do to go to hell? It was amazing. You absolutely nothing. You don't have to do a thing to go to hell. I used to think this is how the devil fools you. I think you had to get so bad, you know, to qualify for hell, like you had to get so good to go to heaven. Both of those are lies. Amen. You don't have to do nothing to go to hell. You're already headed there until you get saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And Jesus warned. Turn to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. This is where it will all end up. If you die without the Lord, die without repenting to God, you're going to end up at the great white throne judgment. This will be the final judgment of mankind. And it says here in Revelation chapter number 20, beginning with verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. 
and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. My question tonight is this to you. You better make sure your name is in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. You see, there's room actually for everybody that was ever born. Their names were put there. But when they did not get saved, it got blotted out. And Jesus will show you that at that judgment. He'll call you up and he'll lay that book out. He'll say, come here. I want to show you <coughs> that in my mercy, I had you in the book. But your name was blotted out because you rejected me. I called over and over again and asked you to come on in, but you rejected me. And now you're headed to the lake of fire. And by the way, you can forget your lawyers. You can forget the plea bargains, the hung juries. You're the one going to get hung. Amen. Amen. You can forget all that mess. There's going to be pure, swift justice, and you'll get just what you deserve. And let me tell you something. Every one of us in here are sinner, and we all deserve hell. Now, I was headed to hell, and on the way to hell, I met a man. Mm, I met Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. And I hope you meet him. I tell you what, before it's too late, you don't have a promise of tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to, the fifth thing is, this could be your last chance to get saved. I don't know that, but there's somebody in here tonight, this could be your last opportunity to receive the Lord. And look over in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. In verse number 8. It says, Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You can't just sit there and say, Oh, preacher, I can get saved any time I want to. I can get saved at the last moment. No, you can't. You don't tell God when you're going to get saved. You get saved when God calls you or you don't get saved at all. Amen. And if the Holy Spirit's got a hold of you here tonight, you ought to get it right tonight. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't wait another second. And I wouldn't count on the philosophy of man. Man is a liar by nature. Amen. Amen. Death often comes without a warning, by the way. People die of heart attacks every day. They didn't know they was going to die that morning they got up. They just dropped dead. Amen. You know what? Over in Proverbs 29, it says, Proverbs 29 and verse 1, it says, He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. One day God will just put your light out like that, and it's over. Amen. But not before he's given you a chance to get saved. Death often comes without a warning. Neglect will take many to hell. Look over there in Acts chapter number 24. Acts 24. In verse 25 and 20, or 24. And after certain days, while Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness and temperance and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I'll call for you. He never called for him again. That man died and he's in hell right now because he never got a convenient season to get saved. The devil will make sure you don't get a convenient season to get saved. The devil will make sure to tell you you're all right. The devil works on that, man. He lets everybody, you're all right just the way you are. Amen. Amen. How about King Agrippa? Acts 26. Acts chapter uh, 26. Verse number 27. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? 
I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. What a tragedy. Here somebody was almost persuaded. He just about made it in. I told him, I'll tell you what we ought to do to some of our family. I know some of you might think this is crude, but if they don't listen to the gospel, they die and they go to hell. We ought to put up a tombstone out here. Here's Uncle Charlie. Now he's in hell, but he was almost persuaded. Amen. Amen. Maybe to get somebody's attention when they're going down through the graveyard reading them markers, and maybe they'll get right with God and get saved. Amen. Come on now. You know what? And the other thing is, pride will keep many away from getting saved. Amen. I'm talking to people in here got so much pride. You've been riding a high horse so long, man, you don't even know what it is to get down off that horse. Amen. Come on now. Amen. I know something about pride. I'd ate up with it myself. Amen. Amen. Pride will take a man to hell in a minute. He's so proud. I don't need that. That's for weak people. I don't need that. And you know what they use? They like to label it uh, religion. I got rid of my religion when I got saved. Amen. I was trying to be religious before I got saved. I was trying to do this and do that. and Maybe I'd hope I'd work my way in, you know, buying the lie of the devil. Amen? Look over in uh, Proverbs 16, 5. Proverbs 16, 5. It said, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord, though hand join in hand. He shall not be unpunished. God said he resists the proud. He doesn't like people that are proud. Need to humble our... By the way, you won't get saved unless you humble yourself, as a child does. Amen? Amen. Then in Matthew chapter number 10, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter number 18, verse 2, and Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I want to tell you something, the night I got saved or the day I got saved, it wasn't let's make a deal, it was let's surrender. Let's just give it up. I fought that thing for as long as I could. I tried every way under the sun, trying to this, tried that. I was a Heinz 57, every kind of religion I could get my hands on. I tried a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I finally realized that I hadn't tried the real thing. Amen. The real thing is Jesus. Amen. When I found that verse, he said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. I said, well, you know what he's saying? Either you go through him or you don't go. Come on now. Now, I could figure that out. I was smart enough to get that, and I believe you can too. Amen? Amen. <coughs> then it says, Matthew chapter number 10. <coughs> Matthew 10, verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. You know that verse in the Bible? It says this over in Romans, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Let me tell you something. Repentance brings about a change of mind. Amen. There are people here tonight, if you're not truly saved, you can accept the Lord, and by the time you're out that door, or well, before you're out the door, you will possess eternal life. If Amen. anything happened to you, you would not go to a devil's hell. If you died, and when you die, you will go to heaven. Salvation is a free gift. God don't want you trying to pay for it. He already paid for it on the cross of Calvary. Amen? Folks, in light of the supreme sacrifice that Jesus Christ has paid for you to do anything less than trust Him as, sa as Savior is like telling God, I don't need you. That's what it's like saying. But I want to ask you a question tonight. And I'll close with this verse, Matthew 24, 44. Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. It said two women will be in the field, the one will be taken, the other left. Where are you going to be? Two men will be uh, in bed. Where are you going to be? The one will be taking the other left. Where are you going to be? Two will be grinding at the mill. The one will be taking the other left. Where are you going to be? 
when the resurrection comes? Are you going to be going with the Lord or are you going to be left behind? Shall we bow our heads? All heads bowed. No one looking around. This is just between you and God. If you're here tonight and you said, Well, preacher, if Jesus came tonight, if I died and Jesus came tonight, I'm sure I'd go to heaven. Now, I wouldn't raise my hand unless I knew that, but if you know that for sure, you may slip your hand up and then put it back down. Thank you. Not everybody could raise their hand, but if you're here tonight and you said, Well, preacher, I'm not sure if I died tonight that I would go to heaven, but I'd like to know that. Anybody at all, just slip your hand. Nobody's going to come to you. Yes, I see those hands there. Yes, sir, I see that hand there. Now, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I'm going to ask you that raised your hand that you're not sure if you died tonight that you'd be saved. If you'd like to know for sure how you could go to heaven and you'd like to trust the Lord personally as your Savior, I'm just going to ask you to get up from your seat and make your way down to this altar. Now, I'll be glad to take this Bible and show you. Now, you raised your hand that you had a need for salvation. There is never a better time to do that than now. So if you raised your hand and you want to trust the Lord, you come now. Amen. Amen. One's coming here. Somebody else had their hand up, raised for salvation. Would you like to trust the Lord tonight? Would it be another one? Sir, you had your hand up. Would you like to trust the Lord? You come now. You had an opportunity to trust the Lord right now. I'm going to show you in the Bible how you can know for sure when you died. You go to heaven. Anybody else? All right, before I open the altar up, those of you here now that want to bring your petitions to the Lord, you come as God leads you now. What's your name? Oh, William Kenneth. William? Is that your fiance or your wife? Hi, if you're sitting there tonight and you say, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to heaven. I'd like to invite you to bow your head now and I'll lead you in a prayer that where you can trust Jesus as your personal Savior. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I believe you died for my sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.